Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ollie and, and today's video is part three of the little series where you guys send me things you need advice on and I do my best to give you advice. Surprisingly, this is one of my most asked for videos. Without further ado, let's just get on with the video. So number one is how do I stop overthinking? This is how I kind of stopped ever overthinking. I kind of sat down with myself and I was like, what am I ever thinking about? Whatever it is, you get it as a thought bubble and every time you notice it come into your head, you can either give yourself three minutes thinking about it and then you just distract yourself and you go off and you do something, you read, you watch a video, you do anything just to distract yourself. Or if you don't want to think about it at all, as soon as you notice it, you go, no. And it's like you tell your brain basically, I don't want to think about this and you think about something else and you have to you have to consciously distract yourself from thinking about that, which sounds a bit reversing, but it honestly works. So it works for me. Now I, I tend to don't overthink. And when I notice myself overthinking something or creating a false scenario or something, I'm like, you know what? I'm not having this. I don't need that in my brain. And you move on to a different thought or you start doing an activity or something. Then your brain can't overthink. So the second one says earning confidence. I assume you mean gaining confidence, like becoming more confident. I mean, I mean obviously I can only talk from what I know. So for me, when I became more confident, it was like a mindset where I was like, you know what? It's my life. I'm living for me, no one else. Like I only get one life, just like everyone else gets one life, live it for me and say I wanted to wear a certain t-shirt which I wasn't confident to wear, I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to wear that because I like it and it's my life so I'm going to wear it for me. It's kind of just rewiring your brain to not care what people think because you realise everyone's got their own life, everyone's got faults, everyone's got good points. So just do whatever you want and whatever you want. If people don't like it, that's their problem. It's not your problem. Do what you want and do it confidently because as long as you're happy and you're making yourself happy, who actually cares what anyone else thinks? That's kind of how I, I think, became more confident about anything because I was like, who actually cares? cares and who is going to make it so deep and so judgy like if people judge you that's their problem and that is a reflection on them so you do you and do it proudly and openly and confidently i think that helps being confident because you just have to do it and fake it confidence and then you become confident that's what i learned anyway the next one says how to slide into a boy's dms i never know what to say i've out honestly never done this like i've never slid into someone's dms i mean other people slide into mine and obviously now i'm like i've got a boyfriend soz if i slide into dms i'd say be confident i also think because i know when i've had people sign into my dms and it's just hey how are you no one wants that kind of conversation i think if i was single and someone popped up to me just saying hey and i put hi they put how are you i'd be like this is a bit boring i think you need to go in there with like a good conversation plan like a good conversation topic like maybe go on their instagram look what we're into try, try and find a topic of conversation to talk about just you know ease in and then you might it might flow or it might not but just go and give them with a blunt hi it's a bit boring and no one wants boring everyone wants a bit of fun be confident go in with a good conversation like kind of pre-plan the conversation slightly i mean don't do a full-on mi5 search no keep it normal and healthy but a good conversation confidence and not expecting too much that's how i think i would sign in someone's dms okay so the next one is advice on mental health struggles for me mental health problems always seem to get better when you, i'd speak about them but it's so cliche everyone says it it's the truest thing ever speaking about your mental health and talking about how you're feeling and when you're having down days when you're having good days talk about that and make normalize it and talk about it the more you offload it offloads up here and it's like more room for happiness and freedom but definitely talk about things try and step out of your brain and view it as a mental health bad day not like a bad life do you know what i mean so like say you're suffering with depression and you're having the worst day ever and you just don't want to get out of bed and things are just not looking great i really know how hard it is but try your best and step back and like look this is just for a day a week a month it's not for a lifetime and it might come and go in your life and that's fine but it isn't every single day so try not to let the bad mental health day overshadow all the good days because trust me even if you haven't had that many yet you will have amazing days to come and there will be like that is life life is ups and downs you're gonna have bad days you're gonna have good days you need both of them to enjoy the good talk about them and try and step back get a different perspective on them i'm like okay i'm having a bad day today that's fine i'm gonna do what i need to do I'm gonna cry when i need to cry etc and then i'm gonna come back out i'm gonna bounce back and counseling, therapy, journaling, things like that help a lot as well, I think. So the next one is, how do you know you're ready for a relationship? I think it's gonna really be different for everyone knowing when you're ready to date someone, like a relationship. Some people, they love going out and they love getting with people. Some people love just being independent and completely free and like doing their own thing with no strings attached. Like it's different for everyone. I think inside there's just something in you where you're like, I want to find the one, I want to settle down, I want to start a future with someone. I think if you're having those thoughts, you're definitely ready. And if you are thinking, oh i'm kind of i still got a little bit of mingling in me then you are not ready and you need to get out of your system 
before you commit to someone because we don't want any infidelities. So I hope that helps. But honestly, I don't really know. I think it's just something in you. You will know when you know. Okay, so the next one is I can't come out to friends, but I do with new people I meet. So, I mean, if that was me, I think I'd look up my friendship circle and be like, why can't I come out to these people? Do I feel judged by them? Do I feel like they won't accept me? Am I just overthinking it? I'm being paranoid. I mean, if they are literally homophobic and we like are derogative or they insult gay people or the LGBTQI plus, if they insult anyone like that, they talk badly about anyone who's gay, lesbian, trans, anything, then cut these people out. They're not healthy and they are quite toxic and immature and just you don't need people like that around you. However, if they show no signs of being homophobic or transphobic or biphobic or anything, then maybe it could be you just having a fear. You've just got to face that fear, which is scary and it's terrifying, but you will do it and hopefully they'll accept you for who you are because why well, shouldn't they? It's who you are. There's no reason not to accept you. And I'm very happy you can come out to a new people you meet because maybe they might be better friends than your original friends. So my advice is work out if they are homophobic or anything. And if you don't think they are, then maybe look at yourself and think this is just an internal fear that I've got, which is so normal and okay and valid. So the final one, which I'm going to answer is self-love. I mean, I, I'm going to take that as practicing self-love or anything, which I've got a video about. I'll link that somewhere. For me, practicing self-love is it's small things. People think it's like taking a week off work, going on holiday, turning your phone off, having a face mask 24 seven, which would be great self-care, but it's not realistic. For me, self-care is making my bed in the morning, reminding myself of things I'm grateful for, having a face mask if I want that, taking time to reflect and like be grateful, eating nice food that I want, whether it's a chocolate bar or avocado on toast. It's just taking little things a day here and there when you can to say thank you to yourself or just to take care of yourself and like, you know what I mean? Like your skincare routine, it's self-love. It's just loving yourself and being like happy and proud of yourself and reminding yourself that practicing self-love is a little bit throughout the day. And I think I explained it better in my video. So make sure you check that out if you do want more. But that's all I'd say. Just doing what you can here and there throughout the day to make sure you love yourself like you deserve. So that is today's video. Thank you very, very much for sending in your advice stories. If you did enjoy, hit a like button, subscribe to my channel. Oh, and follow my Instagram so you don't miss chance to send in your advice thing if I do it at part four. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you next Thursday with another video. Thank you.